So I hear that Luke's wanting to take our brand new Defender HD 10 to a hobby farm and give it a shakedown where its true capabilities truly shine. But I thought, you know, before he does that, why don't I call Can-Am, get a few accessories, and put a whole bunch of stuff on this HD 10 that'll make it shine even brighter. And the HD 10 is massively capable in stock form and truly needs nothing to go to work. However, if you're looking for specific hauling capabilities, there's a few parts and pieces from Can-Am that'll help you do the job quicker. So let's take a closer look with the rear bed area and see what we can come up with. Now I've got a lot of boxes from Can-Am here and from what I understand, a few of these are gonna go together to allow for some significantly larger hauling in the rear bed. And that better capacity is hopefully gonna help out with things like hauling hay. I start out with the headache rack as it's the cornerstone for this rear bed wall extension kit. The cool part is the headache rack is so much more than just a hard stop between the box and the cap. It accepts a mountain of accessories from the gear rail adapter to gun scabbards to, well, just about anything that works with the link attachments. It's strong, secure, and doesn't stick up past the roll bars, so your clearance is still safe out on the trails or around the farm. But before we mount up any other accessories, I want to get back to the extended rear box, and step two requires the bed wall extenders. This is an incredible piece that will totally change the way that you look at your side-by-side's rear cargo box, and it's gonna blow your mind the capacity we can enjoy once it's installed, and installation, yeah, it's a breeze. Now, the bed wall extender isn't just the side walls, it's the rear tailgate portion as well. But say you don't want the full height, well, no problem, just fold the top portion of the side walls down and you're ready to go. And all of this requires absolutely zero tools to make happen. Another unique accessory is the Link Tailgate Extension Divider. Now you can use this with all of the stuff that I've already put on, or you can use it separately and it does a whole bunch of stuff on its own. With the bed wall extender and headache rack, it will allow you to extend the box capacity as a tailgate extender or move it forwards with the link attachment points and use it as a box divider, allowing feed pails or fuel cans to not slide around on you. If you don't have the headache rack, it can also be flipped over at the front of the box and used as a mini headache rack when not in use inside the box. Now Luke's gonna be handing off our Defender to folks who have horses as well as a hobby farm. So it's important to not just give them all of this great box capacity, but also a couple of accessories that are gonna keep them more comfortable when they're out using the Defender, and maybe one or two that might help them get out of tough situations. The obvious first is a roof. You need to have a roof if you're out in the sun for long hours, and when the rain and snow are falling, it'll also help keep you a bit drier. All around, the sturdy injection molded sport roof is a solid place to put your money and is, in my opinion, the number one accessory you should have on any side-by-side -side because of the intensity of the summer heat and how quickly it can negatively impact your day's work or your weekend ride with the family. Farming, construction, property maintenance, or just general trail riding all have one accessory in common, and that accessory is, without a doubt, a winch. Ding, ding, ding. And for us, a 4,500 pound Can-Am HD winch to be precise. This is a winch made to pull. No composite in here, which just means plastic. The gears in this baby are steel. It's all steel with bushings and gears, so it'll do the job today, next year, and next decade. Now I do like synthetic rope on a winch, but I do know that there's no replacement for steel when the job is serious, and for farm use, I find steel to be the cable of choice. This winch comes with 43 feet of it bailed in, and one of the nicest parts of the Defenders, you don't need a mount for your winch. So if you bought a base or a DPS version like we have here today, your winch just bolts right in. There's nothing more than four bolts needed. It's nice and simple. And finally, I can't forget link mounts. These trusty little tool holders right here are gonna fit in any one of the numerous link locations that are on the bed wall extender or even the side of the bed and will hold, well, a wide variety of tools. Be it a rake, shovel, or anything that the rubber straps can expand around, you can take the tools you need with you and not have to worry if they will be there when you arrive. The tool holders go on quick and easy and can be removed quickly should you wanna change positions of your tools on the Defender. Well, I think my job here with the Defender is all done, but Luke's, however, is just getting started. So I better get this thing loaded up on the trailer so he can take it to the farm and see exactly how it performs. But I think both him and the folks he's taking it to are really gonna appreciate all the accessories that I've installed today. Three words to describe owning a farm, 
unpredictable, hard, but also one of the best decisions I could have made. I think I always knew I was gonna end up on a farm. I grew up on a 100 acre farm in a small town. We had every type of animal you could think of. Horses, cows at one point, chickens. I still had a couple horses of my own and I just knew that I wanted to have them in my backyard again. Since we bought the farm, I, I could see the passion in Charlotte when, when she's out there riding on her own property and she boarded for years and loved to have her horses home and she always wanted to have that. So to have this opportunity to have them in our backyard again, she, she just <laughs> feels more at home. Even though it's a lot of work, it's worth it owning a farm myself and having my animals in my backyard and in my care again. We have to get up, I don't know, fairly early, feed them, put them out, do the stalls. There's always extra work that needs to be done, like paddocks that need to be cleaned out or rotated. So I grew up uh, in the country. My family never owned a farm. I worked on a farm as a kid, so I knew what was in store for me. But my fiance, Charlotte, she's, her dream is to own her own hobby farm. When we finally got the chance to buy this farm, we, we jumped on it. Normally we use a wheelbarrow for getting the hay, but it is nice to have a vehicle that you can just throw the hay in the back of the bed and back it in or just dump it. And sometimes I get a kick out of them when they want to eat out of the back. Yeah, it's like a feeder, so it, it's kind of funny to watch them. So it's interesting because Defender's so quiet that the horses don't even, they don't even mind it riding around. Like, it doesn't bother them. They, they see it come in and they think food. These horses are, they love to hear the Defender. They, 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 they see hay. So the animals we have on our farm, we have two regular horses and two minis. And we also have a little puppy named Navy. So he thinks he's a horse. He's one of them. So I guess we really have five horses. When you're using the bed extenders, as well as a headache rack and the box for, for cleaning paddocks, because we're constantly having to clean paddocks uh, to, to, to rotate the horses, because they'll eat the grass down, and then we got to move them to a temporary paddock, and then clean it up, and then we move them back. With the bed extenders, you can load it up with manure and old hay and load it right to the top, and it doesn't fall into the cab. It keeps fairly clean, so you're not making a mess. I feel like the Defender has like a dual purpose for me. So my fiance and I recreationally ride. So we normally have ATVs. I personally prefer a side-by-side -side because I can take the dog with me. It's a little bit nicer for me to sit in and go for long rides on versus the ATV. I've only ever driven the Maverick before and I loved the Maverick, but I feel like with the Defender, it might have more of a multi-purpose for me personally, because I do own the farm. So it does have a dump box on it. I can use it to clean out the paddocks instead of taking a wheelbarrow and cleaning the paddocks out. And then it has the dump box, so I can literally back it halfway onto the manure pile and, and dump it versus trying to get a wheelbarrow up. So I feel like for me personally, it does work in a lot of different areas in the farm versus something like the Maverick, where it would only be for recreational. After using this Defender to haul hay and clean the paddocks, I decided to take it out and do some trail work and clean up the forest a little bit. 
We have a lot of softwood trees on the farm. It's because of the fact that we're on sand and our location. Fortunately, if we get any wind, any type of storm, heavy rain, we get a lot of trees down like constantly in the bush. Um, so we're constantly going back there and uh, cleaning up brush that's fallen or trees. When I like to cut wood, especially if there's a down tree in, in the forest, if it's thick weeds or undergrowth, I tend to like to just pull, haul it out. I'll pull it out with a tractor or, or whatever. To be honest, there was a log down and I hooked up to it thinking, oh, this might not, this might not work. Sure enough, I hooked on and it, the defender just yanked it out like nothing. I, I actually think it yanked it out better than my tractor. Um, and then once it's out in the clearing, it just makes it way easier to cut uh, and, and block it up. So the Defender works really great because not only can you carry all your equipment out in order to cut the trees and clean everything up, but it can also carry wood and then you can use the dump box to do whatever you need to do with the wood to get rid of it. So using all the accessories on the Defender, when you're, especially when you're working on trails and cutting wood and stuff like that, I think that's where it becomes uh, very, very useful. With the tailgate extender, you can stack it up and still be able to put your chainsaw and everything back in and still have quite a bit of wood in your box. You can use the link tool handles. I put a, a weed eater on there and I also had my maul. It alleviates how much stuff is in your, uh, in your box. It just makes things a lot easier, a lot more efficient. Every time you turn around, it's like, oh, I'm gonna use the weed eater. It's right there. You take it off, away you go. I'm gonna use, I gotta cut some wood. The mall's there, your chainsaws are all there. We also have horse trails for riding in the back of our property. We have to constantly be checking that just because it's not dirt, it's grass. So we actually have to cut it with the lawnmower pretty consistently to keep it down enough. It does grow up quite quickly. I also don't have a sand ring, so I have to constantly be cutting my actual riding ring because it is also grass. So these are daily things that you have to think about. For the bed wall extender, you can hold a lot of hay. Uh, to put in perspective, I have a six and a half foot box in my pickup truck and I can get 10 small square belts without stacking it high. And I had eight in the back of the Defender. Uh, especially when you use the tailgate extender, you can get at least one or if not two more bales in. But if you had larger fields, it's I've seen people use um, little go-karts, but I feel like they don't have enough space to put enough hay for a large amount of horses. Whereas I feel like this can hold roughly around like 10 bales. So that would be like pretty handy to throw out hay to multiple horses. Charlotte is also an, an, an English eventing rider. She always is out practicing dressage and jumping Tigger, um, which is her eventing horse. She likes moving the jumps uh, with the Defender. Uh, makes things a little easier when she's trying to make her courses. If you had a, an actual sand ring, you could use it for harrowing as well. Um, it just makes things a lot easier. Because me and Graham own the farm, I feel like whenever we buy something, whether it's an ATV or any type of equipment, it gets used because on a farm, we're in cottage country, it gets used either on the farm, it's constantly running, and then in the afternoons, we'll shoot down the road to the lake or to a trail. I think between Shar and I, I think the one that loved Defender the most was Navy, our pup. He couldn't wait to go for a ride.
By now, I'm sure you've all seen the test AJ and I did on Yamaha's two-seat Wolverine R-Max 1000. If you haven't, head on over to YouTube and check it out, but I'll give you a basic synopsis of it right now to save time. Basically, we both loved it and had very few complaints. From trails to rocks and mud to high-speed riding, it exceeded our expectations at every turn. We also had a four-seat R-Max like this one, and while we did do a feature story on it, we didn't have enough time to do a proper full test ride. So that's what I'm gonna do today. But instead of loading this thing up with the family and doing a cookout on the trail, I wanted to test this one a little bit different. Today, I'm gonna test the four-seat R-Max from a driver-only perspective. My rationale goes like this. The vehicular characteristics that make a two-seat side-by-side great are exactly the same as the characteristics that make a four-seat side-by-side great. Ride, handling, power, comfort, overall capabilities, it's all the same stuff. On top of that, most four-seaters see only occasional backseat passengers. The R-Max 4's rear seats are even convertible to offer more cargo space in two-seat mode. So why not test it that way to see if the subtle differences versus the two-seat model make any difference, better or worse? From the front seats forward, the R-Max 4 is identical to the two-seater. Literally every part is exactly the same. Double A-arms yield 14.2 inches of travel damped by a set of Fox QS3 piggyback shocks. Yamaha's on-command 4x4 system handles front-end power transfer duties and their three-position D-mode system offers three different power profiles for different riding situations. The front cabin area is very comfortable and very nicely appointed. The seats are reclined just far enough without going too far. A nice tilting steering wheel is comfortable and easy to grip, and there's enough switch locations in the dashboard to make the space shuttle engineers jealous. For all of our American viewers, you will be getting the Adventure Pro system mounted in the dash when you buy the XTR model like this one. One of the few things I have to gripe about though is that for XTR buyers in Canada, the Adventure Pro is not included. You just get a blank panel in the dashboard. So far, all of these features and specifications mimic the two-seat model exactly, but now it's time to move behind the front seats and this is where things get very different. The wheelbase on the four-seater is stretched a mere 3.5 inches. Overall vehicle length of the four-seater is 8.8 .8 inches longer than the two-seater. When it comes to maneuverability on the trail, the extra 3.5 inch wheelbase is almost unnoticeable. And the only time you'll actually notice the extra overall length is when you're backing up against something like a tree. Otherwise, it's a complete non-issue. A longer wheelbase on a four-seat side-by-side isn't a surprise. But what is a surprise on this four-seat side-by-side is that the rear end travel is shorter than the two-seater and not by a little bit. It's 3.6 inches shorter to be exact for a total of 13.3 inches versus the two-seater's 16.9 inches. This is the aspect of the four-seater I was most curious to test. How much of a difference will it really make for mildly aggressive trail riding? After putting a bunch of miles on this unit, I can say that I've been pleasantly surprised. Rear end ride quality is actually very good from this AA arm setup. Of course, a lot of that is thanks to an excellent set of Fox QS3 piggyback shocks. Is the ride as good as the two seater? Does it feel as plush? No, not quite, but it's not far off and you really only notice the difference on the biggest hits anyway. AJ and I covered the rear seating arrangement in great detail in our last story on the R-Max 4. Basically, once you're inside, there's actually a surprising amount of legroom and overall space for a full-size adult. It's getting in and out that's a bit of a problem. The way the body sides and rear doors are designed to make getting in and out a bit of an acrobatic feat. It's by no means a deal breaker, but it's definitely something to consider. I've done the majority of this test with the rear seats in their forward extended cargo capacity setup. This system does work to give you more cargo space, a lot more actually. But the tracks the seat backs slide on do get gummed up with dirt very easily, which makes sliding the seats back and forth difficult. Most people won't be doing it often anyway, but I do think there's a better way to achieve the same results. Both the two and four seat R-Max models use the same 999cc dual overhead cam twin cylinder engine that produced right around 100 horsepower and Yamaha's ultra durable, ultramatic CV transmission. The only other differences worth noting, really, are that the four-seater weighs approximately 174 pounds more than the two-seater, and in XTR trim, it comes with a 29-inch set of Maxxis Carnivores versus the two-seater's 30-inch set. So what's my final verdict here? Is the four-seat R-Max really that much different than the two-seater? If you have to buy a four-seater, are you sacrificing anything in terms of ride quality, handling, or overall performance? In my opinion, not in a significant enough amount to worry about 
Obviously, if having four seats isn't important to you, the two-seater is the best choice. But if you must have four seats, the R-Max 4 is one of the best options in the industry right now. All the benefits of four seats in the same size package with all the same features and nearly identical specifications as the two-seat model.